The latest offerings from Apple, Google and Xiaomi have finally arrived, but how does the new iPhone stack up against its predecessor and how do all of them compare to the Snapdragon powered S25 Ultra in four different benchmarks where we'll be testing out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling score and frames per second. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness level using a lux meter. All of them have been updated to their latest available software updates. Every single device here is now running on a 3 nanometer process node and for the first time in a long time, all of these chipsets have been manufactured by TSMC. The latest iPhone bumps up its clock speed to 4.26 GHz, but the overclocked Snapdragon 8 Elite in the S25 Ultra still has the highest at 4.47 GHz. For once, the Pixel doesn't have the lowest clock speed, but its main core is the same core which the Xiaomi uses as secondary cores, since only the Xiaomi's Dimensity chip and the Samsung Snapdragon chip have all big core designs, skipping out on efficiency cores completely. They all make use of LP DDR5 X RAM, but the new iPhone finally has 12 gigs of RAM, matching the Samsung and Xiaomi. The Pixel has 16 gigs, which is twice as much as last year's iPhone. The Pixel and Samsung have UFS 4.0 storage, the Xiaomi has faster UFS 4.1, and the iPhones rely on NVMe storage. All of them have 120Hz LTPO displays, except for the Xiaomi, which has a 144Hz adaptive sync display. They have all been set to their highest possible screen resolutions, and all of them will be using their respective high performance modes, with the iPhone's adaptive power off and the Pixel's adaptive battery off to boost performance. Today we will be running through the latest versions of Antutu version 10, since version 11 isn't yet available for iPhones, as well as the latest versions of Geekbench 6, a 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme and 3D Mark Steel Nomad Lite, and in between each benchmark we will be noting down each phone's temperature changes, which devices will come out on top in terms of efficiency and cooling, and will the latest flagships from Apple, Google and Xiaomi be able to keep up? This is Tech Nick and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things going, we're going to be checking out their battery percentages at the start of the test. I have the nano SIM version of the new iPhone, just like most of the world, which has a 4,823 milliamp hour battery. The eSIM only version has a larger battery, but this one is still larger than the 16 Pro Maxes, so hopefully we'll see an improvement. We'll be using an emissivity level of 0.5 on an infrared heat gun, since that's the most accurate for electronic devices, and we're sitting at a room temperature of around 13.7 degrees Celsius, with the AC set to 16 degrees Celsius before and throughout the entire test. The new iPhone 17 Pro Max now has a vapor chamber cooling system, so I'm interested to see how it compares. But at the start, while they're all sitting idle here, the Pixel is actually the hottest and the Xiaomi is the coolest. The first benchmark test we will be running is Antutu version 10. I really wanted to run the new version 11, but it's not available for iPhones yet, and it's still in beta stages for Android. I know Android uses OpenCL and GL and iOS uses Metal API, so we can't really compare GPU and Vulkan scores in Antutu, but it seems the latest versions of Antutu version 10 and the latest iOS 26 update has now made it more comparable than ever before. Antutu pretty much tests everything, CPU processing, GPU power with a base test and a demanding test, memory testing and user experience testing, including image processing and video editing. Now I know that the new Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 and Dimensity 9500 have already been announced, but they haven't yet made their way to the global markets in global devices or into my studio, so stay tuned for my upcoming benchmark test videos where I'll get them in hand and be able to test them out. But for now, the 8 Elite and Dimensity 9400 Plus still pack in a serious punch and should give the new Apple and Google chips a serious run for their money. I was thrilled to hear that the new Tensor G5 CPU found in the Pixel 10 Pro XL is now made by TSMC and on their 3 nanometer N3P process. And while its clock speeds are up, it still uses a prime core that's the same as the Dimensity's middle performance cores, the Cortex X4. The Dimensity chip in the Xiaomi has no efficiency cores and it runs a super performance Cortex X925 Prime Core, which is a huge step up when compared to the Google chip. Some food for thought, the new chips from Apple and Google are running third gen 3 nanometer nodes, which focuses more on performance, while the Snapdragon, Dimensity and A18 Pro chips use older second gen nodes, which focuses more on efficiency, so we might see some interesting battery results here. When it comes to temperatures after Antutu, the Xiaomi gained the most in degrees Celsius and the new iPhone gained the least, but it wasn't a huge difference between it and the 16 Pro Max, so I guess the new vapor chamber and 
switch back to aluminum does make a difference, but not that much. The pixel kind of surprised me here, but it's probably not working as hard as the rest, so its temperatures should be quite controllable. And speaking of temperatures, the Taurus Flexline charger has smart temperature control, which means faster charging, no excess heat, and helps protect your battery, keeping your phone running strong for longer. When your iPhone loses battery from long gaming sessions, or I don't know, back-to-back -back benchmark testing, it's always good to have a fast charger handy in order to bring that battery percentage back up. And since the iPhone 17 doesn't include a charger in the box, the Taurus Flexline charger is a really solid option. Taurus has been making accessories for Apple for 13 years now, but the Flexline charger is a great tool to have for any phone you might use on the daily, or any two phones or any two devices. You see it has a one meter retractable cable which has been made to last for over 10 years. It automatically locks in once you reach the length you're after and when you're done, give it a small tug and it'll retract back into itself with a magnetic self-locking mechanism. This is huge for OCD people like me. I honestly can't stand cables, so having one built into the actual charger is a massive game changer. The retractable cable can push 67 watts of power, charging your phone up to 65% in just 30 minutes. There's also an additional USB-C port to allow you to charge two devices at the same time, which features an intelligent power distribution system that automatically allocates optimal wattage to different devices, helping protect their battery health. It uses gallium nitride technology, which means it's super compact. And it's crazy when comparing it to other lower wattage chargers that don't have cables built into them and can't charge two things at one time. And the cherry on top is its foldable plug, which makes it perfect for traveling and prevents accidentally scratching other tech in your backpack. Check out the link down below to find out more and get yours today. Now let's get back to the test. The next benchmark is Geekbench 6, which mainly focuses on single and multi-core CPU speeds. Single and multi-core performance should be up on the new iPhone as its prime and secondary core clock speeds have jumped up a bit. And while the Pixel is using new Cortex A725 middle performance cores upgraded from the A720, it will likely be held back by its two older A520 efficiency cores. It's good to see though that Google are now using five middle performance cores instead of three and two efficiency cores instead of four but only its medium cores are using a new core the prime and efficiency cores are the same as last year it's completely normal for temps to drop off the geekbench as it's not as long or as demanding as antutu but if temps drop by a lot it's usually a good indication of throttling thankfully none of them dropped by too much with the samsung dropping the most and the pixel dropping the least the new iPhone is still the coolest and the Xiaomi is still the hottest. Our last two benchmark tests are within 3D Mark, and since each test is just one minute long, we'll record temps after both tests. The first test, Wildlife Extreme, is a mobile bench rendered at 4K, and then we'll jump into Steel Nomad Lite, which is rendered at 1440p resolution and is intended for lightweight PCs. I really wanted to test out Solar Bay or even the new Solar Bay Extreme, but the Google Tensor G5's GPU doesn't offer hardware based ray tracing, so it's not available to test. It's strange though, because the Pixel has a Power VR DXT GPU, which does actually support ray tracing, but for some reason, Google opted not to enable the feature. Another interesting thing is that the GPU found in the Pixel can boost up to 1.1 gigahertz, but it seems to run at 396 megahertz megahertz most of the time. Apple's new 6-core GPU found in the 17 Pro Max jump speeds up to 1.62 gigahertz, which is a healthy step up from last year's 1.49 gigahertz. And it's now even higher than the Xiaomi's Dimensity chip, which uses an Immortalis GPU clocked at 1.612 gigahertz. The Adreno 830 GPU found in the Samsung has been overclocked to 1.2 gigahertz, so it's still a step ahead of the Pixel. The Pixel's Tensor G5 might not perform as well as the rest during long games gaming sessions, but unless you're really into emulating PC games on your phone, I highly doubt you'd notice much of a difference. Even last year's chips max out FPS in the most demanding mobile games, so phones have already kinda reached their peak of what they're actually capable of. And due to the Pixel's fantastic optimizations, it honestly feels faster than the Samsung and Xiaomi on the daily when using the phone normally. After both 3D Mark tests, the new iPhone was once again the coolest, but it gained the most temp, while the Xiaomi gained the least and the Samsung ended off the hottest. And overall temperature from start to finish left the Samsung as the hottest and it gained the most temp overall. The Xiaomi was almost as hot, but the new iPhone ended off the coolest, gaining the least temp. 
Last year's iPhone wasn't far off though, but you have to remember that the new vapor chamber dissipates heat more, meaning its outside temp should be hotter as it's pushing all the internal heat away from the CPU, keeping its internals cooler. It's also good to see the Pixel keep things cooler than the other Androids here. And when it comes to battery life, the Pixel actually drained the least, but the iPhone 16 Pro Max had the best milliamp hour per minute reading, meaning it's more efficient than the new iPhone 17 Pro Max. Yes, the 16 has a smaller battery, but they both drained by 11%. The Pixel actually landed up more efficient than the 17 Pro Max, but the Xiaomi and Samsung were the least efficient, with the Samsung dropping by a whopping 15%, ending off with the worst milliamp hour per minute drain. It seems that the new One UI 8.0 updates has negatively affected the S25 Ultra's battery efficiency. But that great battery performance from the iPhone 16 Pro Max and Pixel 10 Pro XL landed them in 4th and 5th place in Antutu. Interestingly, the 16 Pro Max received the second highest CPU score here, only being beat by the 17 Pro Max. The new iPhone placed second overall here, surpassing the S25 Ultra, but it was beat by the significantly cheaper Xiaomi 15T Pro, which managed to take first place. But when it comes to single core CPU scores in Geekbench, the Xiaomi landed in fourth, only beating the Pixel, and not really by that much. The Samsung was quite a step up, but both iPhones pulled ahead, with the latest iPhone taking home the win. The Xiaomi and Pixel once again trailed the pack in multi-core scores, but the Xiaomi score is quite a bit higher this time. The Samsung managed a higher score than the iPhone 16 here, but the iPhone 17 Pro Max snagged another win. Placements changed up quite a bit when it comes to GPU-focused 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, with the Samsung landing up on top quite a bit ahead of the Xiaomi in second place, which barely beat the new iPhone. But in Steel Nomad Lite, the iPhone 17 bounced back and got first place, followed closely by the Samsung and Xiaomi and absolutely destroyed the iPhone 16 and Pixel 10. After averaging their placements with Geekbench split in two, the iPhone 17 Pro Max placed first overall. The Samsung came in second, then the Xiaomi, then last year's iPhone, and the Pixel came dead last. I was kinda expecting the latest iPhone to come out ahead, but things might change as soon as I get Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 and Dimensity 9500 powered phones in the studio. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for my next benchmark test. Oh, and don't forget to click the link down below to pick up your Taurus Flexline charger. As always, this is Technic and I'll catch you in the next one.